today's reading, assigned reading from Mark is from a paragraph or from a chapter that is one parable after another, all of which are attempting to define the kingdom of God. The central theme in Jesus' teaching. If you were to take a course in theology at one of the theological education institutions here in Hyde Park, one of the first things you would note is that there was a continued emphasis by Jesus on the kingdom of God. He talked about that more than anything else. The coming of the reign or rule of God. It's coming, he said. It's here, he said. Enter it. Receive it. Amazing. God's rule is available to us here and now. The major theme, Jesus really had one sermon, and that's it. The kingdom of God. God's rule. The time when God is in charge and God reigns. And the will of God is done here as well as in heaven. Pray for it. Live it. Receive it. Enter it. The kingdom of God. What's Christianity about? It's about the reign of God. What's this new religion that came into the world with such an abrupt start? The reign of God. The time when God takes charge. It had been long predicted. Most of the prophets talked about the reign of God hundreds of years before Jesus. Hosea defined the reign of God as a time of amazing forgiveness when people would forgive each other for terrible things that they had done to each other. Micah, Micah spoke about a time of righteousness when God's righteousness would, would be over all the earth. And righteousness, of course, is translated justice in English. And the same is true of other prophets over the years, one after another, talking about when God comes and takes charge and walks among us and does what God desires all of us to do. The kingdom of God, Jesus said, it's like a mustard seed, a tiny little seed, the smallest of the seeds, but if you plant it and nurture it, it grows into one of the largest of the bushes so that even the birds can build their nests in it and find protection and safety. So, the day of the Lord, righteousness, justice, and according to Isaiah, peace. All these words to try to define what the reign or kingdom of God meant to them. And of course, my question for you this morning is, when you hear that phrase, what, how do you interpret it? What does it mean to you? What is the kingdom of God? Where can we find it? Where is it illustrated? A place where we can see it, an opportunity to experience it. Because in one way or another, I'm sure all of us have experienced at least a glimpse of the kingdom, of what it's like 
when God's in charge, takes charge, and we experience God's reign. Receive it, enter it. It comes in tiny ways. Would you least expect it? A tiny little glimpse, but it can grow and grow and grow. The theologians today, many of them, have recognized that a major teaching in the New Testament is the calling of the church to be an example, a living, breathing example of life inside the kingdom. So, you walk into this church, and what do you find? Do you find your image of the kingdom of God here? Or even better, do you find Jesus' image of the kingdom of God in this congregation? We sure try. We try hard to be a manifestation, an example, a good example of life inside the kingdom. We welcome everybody, everybody we can welcome. We invite them into our midst. We give them a place of honor. Well, it isn't always that way. Some churches are really struggling, struggling with the idea that they are to be God's representative on earth, that they are to represent the kingdom of God. This past week, in the New York Times, on the 9th of June, a young opinion writer by the name of David French, who lives in, in uh, Tennessee, wrote an article describing a very painful experience he had with his Presbyterian church. It's not the Presbyterian denomination that we're part of. It's an ultra-conservative Presbyterian denomination that he and his family were part of. He said when they moved to Nashville, they deliberately bought a house that was close to a church of their denomination so that they could participate in its worship on Sunday and send their children to the school it sponsored Monday through Friday. But then the break came. It was devastating for the French family. They, there were two things that happened. The first thing that happened was <clears throat> that they adopted a two-year-old little girl from Ethiopia and w welcomed her as a member of their family. And the second thing they did was, well, David, an opinion writer for the Times, wrote an article for the New York Times in which he publicly dissociated himself from his former membership in the Republican Party. He said he couldn't be a part of it anymore. And then he committed even a greater sin in the eyes of some of the church members. He separated himself from Donald Trump and said he, there was no way he could support that man. So bad things started to happen to them. He said the racism was grotesque, just grotesque. Somebody asked his wife, why couldn't you adopt from Norway instead of Ethiopia? Somebody asked one of his sons, did you purchase your city for a loaf of bread? Somebody else asked him, saying, don't you realize that slavery was good for black people because it taught them how to live in America? Well, I'll try to swallow that. It sickened them, just sickened them. Then in addition to them, to that, there was the political reaction, a strong negative political reaction by people who didn't know whether they were Christian Americans 
with an emphasis on being Americans who happened to be Christians? Or were they American Christians with an emphasis on their Christi Christianity and a minor to their national uh, living? So what did they do? Well, the French family reluctantly left that church. They said the pastor was certainly supportive, but the members became intolerable. So they left that church and joined a multi-ethnic church in Nashville. And they're much happier in that particular church as I think they would be in this church. Well, the Jesus movement in Jesus' time, one of the reasons that the Jesus movement spread so rapidly in the first century world was because it was a welcoming church, a unique community, unique communities that represented the will of God. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Welcoming a church, a religious center a people, a community, specially focused on welcoming everybody. Well, I don't know how you define the kingdom of God, what you think Jesus meant when he talked about it, but if you turn in your New Testament to Matthew's Gospel, chapter five, follow along while I read what Jesus had to say about the kingdom of God. When Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for so persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus' definition. Who does he welcome? Who, in his opinion, are the happy ones, the blessed ones of our society? <laughs> All the people who are low down, who's omitted, who's not on the list. The richest, the most powerful, the people throwing their weight around, the people who oppress, the people who have not yet recovered from their racism, the people who know that they are Christians first, Americans second. 
who's blessed and who's not blessed. Well, did you make it to the list? I ask you, did you make it to Jesus' list? I feel for the church that the French family felt they had to leave. That is a church in great trouble, great pain. It's a failure. It is failing to demonstrate life in the kingdom. Well, how about us? I have my hopes. There are days when I sit in my office here and think about this church. And I think about Jesus. And I wonder if Jesus participated in this church, even for a short time, would he say of us, well done, good and faithful people. Amen.